good morning. Welcome to Madhouse TV. Welcome to Rendezvous with Alicia. Um, I hope everybody is safe, warm, has electric, has food, and if you don't, you can always PM me on Facebook because I've been doing a lot of charity, uh, helping a lot of other people. Um, you, as you know, Long Island, the Tri-State area, we were hit really um, bad by Hurricane Sandy. About, I think we're coming on two weeks now, and um, I'm gonna, I was trying. I was going to talk a lot about it today, but it really my my own town, South Amityville, was pretty much devastated. I have neighbors that lost their homes, and I decided just to give a little shout out to everybody to say that we really pitched in together as a community. And if anybody needs anything, the Red Cross, the Salvation Army, um, there's a lot of charities, uh, town organizations that are helping with each other, and. There's always me. You can always uh, PM me on Facebook, but I'm not going to talk that much into it. Um, Madhouse TV, we're planning a big a fundraiser for it, so we'll, uh, we'll talk more about it then. But um, today on my show, I have somebody that I've been waiting so long to meet. We've actually, this has been in the works for about three months. I have Ellen Kay sitting up here with me. How are you today? I'm good. I'm really happy to be here. Thank you so much for having us. You are welcome. Ellen, I, you have to tell the world about you. Oh, gosh. Okay, because you have such history behind you. And um, I'd like to talk about you, about Moscow 57, and then how you met all these phenomenal, incredible people. Um, well, I guess the first thing is just that I had good luck. I was, um, you know, born in, my parents owned the Russian tea room, so that's just a kind of, that's just good luck. That's fate. Yeah. <laughs> Um, my father actually bought into it in 1947. Wow. And he uh, owned and operated it until 1967 when he passed away. And he'd already met my mom 10 years before, so she was married to him and, you know, running the restaurant with him. And then when he passed away, she took the restaurant over and ran it for another 30 years, really. We had it for 49 years. We sold it to the Leroy family in... Um, 96. Wow. And the Leroy still own it? No, they actually uh, no longer own it. it uh, it's got, had a long history. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's owned, um, I forgot, I'm sorry, I forgot the name of the current owner. Um, but uh, there's a new, there's, it's not really a new owner anymore. I believe he's had it for a long time now. Maybe eight years or something like that. Now, what was that like growing up? At the, I mean, your family owned the Russian Tea Room, one of the biggest restaurants. Everybody knows about the Russian Tea Room. What was that like? Well, I, it, you know, it was, it was actually like our living room. So, except for the fact that, you know, a lot, there were a lot of famous people there all the time. And even though it was like our living room, um, it had that formal quality about it because, you know, very big personalities were there. So it was a real mix. Um, it, and it, it had different lives. Like when my father was alive, it was a more casual environment, you mm -hmm. know, and darker, you know, and more masculine. And then when my mother took it over, she really made it, you know, took it and made it very glamorous. So it really, it had many different personalities over the years, or maybe, maybe, two, maybe two personalities. But it was always exciting. I mean, I ne you never got, I never got Jade, of course, I was a child, but even so, I never got used to it. I mean, you always, you know, you'd come in and, um, you know, the maitre d' would say to you, oh, it's, um, you know, so-and-so's here today, you know, and it was just thrilling. I don't think anybody got used to it, you know? Now, having all of those uh, celebrities, A-list celebrities, famous people being there, I know a lot of politicians, is that what made you want to become, like, an actress or getting to, get into acting, theater, music? You know, who the heck knows? My mom was a, a very talented actress. She actually came to New York. Um, she was discovered by something back then, which was New Faces. And she was New Faces, I think, of 1952 with Eartha Kitt and Paul Lynn. I mean, it was just unbelievable. I mean, she was handpicked out of Northwestern, came here and, you know, got a, like a, you know, understudy to, I don't know, something like Audrey Hepburn. I, I mean, really, you know, got movies and everything. So, I mean, my mom was a successful actress and was making commercials and everything when she met my dad. So... Um, that was probably a part, a big part of it, you know, and she didn't get to pursue it. And I think that um, as, as much as she had a fabulous career in the restaurant, she always regretted that somewhat, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I think I saw that regret and I've always decided that I would do both because I always loved the restaurant business. I did. I loved it. I loved it and I loved, you know, theater. And eventually I became more in love with music than with acting. And that's pretty much how it happened, I think. But I'm sure you're right. All of those people around me were so many talented people. So 
I just grew into a hybrid. You know, I know it's a strange hybrid because a lot of people in the restaurant business are only in it to make money so while they're doing the acting or something, and I'm always that person. <laughs> I'm really in it, and I really love it. And right. I've always worked in restaurants all my life since I was 14. Now, were you yeah. able to perform as a child at the Russian Tea Room? No, nothing like that. Mm -hmm. I was just like a regular kid, and I just performed in school, you know, and stuff like that. I was just, a, you know, every, I, it was a pretty regular life except that, you know, in the dining room of the tea room, all these amazing things were happening. Sure. You know? Now but my life was, you know, pretty simple. Yeah, now tell me about, um, now, after your mom had sold the Russian tea room or whatever, you had gone to college, and that's how you met oh, Seth. Oh, well, it's nice of you to do that because yeah. you just took about 10 or 15 years off my life. Oh, my but God, i <laughs> No, I love it. That's made, made me a lot younger. No, no, it, it actually didn't happen that way. Um, when she sold the tea room, I actually went to work at the Smith and Walensky restaurant group. Oh, nice. And I was actually with them for 11 years. I opened their um, private space at Park Avenue Cafe, which is now Park Avenue Winter, Spring, Summer, Fall. And then I started doing their events in New York. And there was, um, I actually worked under a really amazing uh, banquet, um, I don't know, a guru, uh, Mary Ellen Murphy. And I, I learned a lot from her. And she, she actually became the national director. I grew up under her, running all our spaces. Over time, became, you know, over overseeing New York and then eventually their national events director when Mary Ellen left. So I had that, that was a pretty big job. That's and, huge. And that was a lot. It was yeah. really great training for um, being this, you know, the CEO of this very, we're a very small company, but um, I got really great training there, you know, because we went public. So Smith went public while I was there. And so, and I was in corporate and, you know, it was a great experience. So, um, but in the meantime, <laughs> I should really go back. Before we sold the tea room in 89, that's when I became a professional singer. And I was actually working at the tea room. And I went to the French culinary simultaneously and became a nightclub singer and started playing around town and then started putting live music acts into other people's venues. And, um, and then a little bit after, and then Seth and I, Seth and I, came, we'll, you'll meet Seth and we'll tell you that story, but sure. he's um, one of my business partners and he's also our chef today, and, uh, but he wears a lot of different hats, but he's our chef at um, our pop-ups and our catering and all of that. So we met in college and then we were actually in the music business together because he'll tell you he was with William Morris and he had his own talent agency and so we worked together and then... Um, we started putting live music acts together, and so I guess I can segue to, um, I'm not sure, it, it's like, I guess when I decided to open Moscow 57, um, I called Seth up and see if he wanted to do it with me, and we started working on the business plan. We actually spent a long time um, coming, figuring it out, because I, I really didn't want to open another Russian tea room that's already open, and that's not what I'm doing. I wanted to create something new and, and creating something new is, is not actually that easy, especially when the old idea is so much in your head and I was so uh, emotionally attached to it. Of course. Really emotionally attached. Yeah. So it took time to really figure it out and I think we have. I think there's a lot enough of the tea room there and then like a whole new piece which comes with the Central Asian cuisine which comes with all the live artists and the visual art and all of those things come from the tea room but they're in a contemporary kind of more casual, affordable way, you sure. know, and Where more did you bohemian. Come up with the name? <laughs> well, I wanted to bring people back to the story of the tea room. <clears throat> okay. and, and then 57 is the street the tea room was on. It's also the, the street I grew up on in my lucky number. Oh, sweet. You know, so it kind of always makes people go, what the heck? <laughs> yeah. Now, you know what I want? Before we go any further, can you explain a pop-up? Because I know even when we first met, I'm like, ooh, what's a pop-up? But now I get it, but for, just for the general audience. Well, um, pop-ups really come out of, I think, out of hard times. Mm -hmm. Because most people would just go ahead and open a restaurant. Uh, but, you know, I was just... Uh, raised normally. I don't have a trust or anything. I've always worked for a living. And so when we went to do this, you know, we had to, you know, start raising funds and it took some time and I just can't sit around. So I've always been performing in nightclubs and stuff and all of that. And so uh, when Seth and I got to the place where we felt like, okay, we can start really doing this, we started a mini catering and a mini music label <laughs> company, which is what Moscow 57 is at this point, on our way to the brick and mortar restaurant. And so um, we met these people from Holiday House, and they said, will you come in and do a pop-up cafe for a month? Will you come to life as a restaurant? And that's exactly uh, what we're doing. 
And we started doing that a year ago. And then other people said, oh, OK, that's great. You know? And so we popped up in Harlem over the summer. And we were there for three months on Wednesday nights under the train tracks of the Metro North in the Urban Garden Center, which is a really great place to buy plants and everything in a tent. And we had our movie screen out back, which had the, the artists and the, you know, the visual arts and the painters and the photographers. And then we were in the tent making music. And Seth was cooking kebabs at a food truck. <laughs> and um, it was pretty amazing. Actually, we just got nominated for that. For um, Broadway Cabaret Awards has nominated us uh, in the category of um, uh, Best Variety Show. I it just, this week we got that. And, and Best Host. Wow. So, yeah. You guys are extremely diverse. <laughs> I love it. That's one of the things I was drawn to you about is because there's nothing stopping you and you just are living this dream. You're going from one dream and then you've captured every element of your personal talents and found these amazing people that that put the puzzle together. I'm, I'm just very honored to have you here. Oh, well, I re well, we're just really thrilled to be here. I think, you know, that we're just very pragmatic. Yes. You know, and I'm the kind of uh, person that really can't sit around, and I don't think that not having money should stop you from doing anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, life is short, and I do think pretty much all the time about how I'm going to feel, uh, you know, on my deathbed. I make my choices every day like that. I think, you know, when I get really scared and I think, oh, my God, this is a huge risk, which I'm doing all the time, you know, even just in the smallest ways and the biggest ways. And then I think, um, would I, would I want to live not do, like, do I really want to be at the end of my life and think, you know, oh my God, if I hadn't spent that money or I hadn't chosen that person, if I hadn't done that. And I, and I always, that's what makes it easier to make decisions because mm -hmm. I just am very aware of mortality. Right. <laughs> you yeah, know, please, and sure. it just keeps me straight. Like mm -hmm. I just, you know, keep it going. And I have amazing partners. Yeah, let's talk you know? about your partners here. I mean, I was going over the list over here. with all, I mean, you have Ethan, Benjamin, you have um, Seth over there, and yourself. I, I mean, I was, I was reading the list. Seth does cooking in restaurants. Uh, he does celebrity dinners, movie stars, breakfast, breakfast for senators, <laughs> lunch for world-famous chefs, and three meals a day for 250 <laughs> hungry football players. I mean, this is... That's just Seth. Then we get into um, uh, Ethan, who has played guitar with Kristen Chenoweth, Bernadette Peters, uh, Cy Coleman, Carol King. He's done Broadway shows of 42nd Street, West Side Story, The Full Monty, and Cats. And then we move on to Benjamin, who... Um, I know, it's crazy. I, I mean, he has played with Harry Connick Jr. He was Lena Horne's bassist. The two of them were the guitarists <laughs> for Sesame Street. I mean, this is, I, I can't, Gregory Hines. I know. And um, really yeah, Woody <laughs> Allen, Robert De Niro. I'm like, oh, my God, I can't believe I have all these people here. But we actually have to cut to a commercial. And when we come back, Seth is going to come up here. We're going to get into a little bit of the culinary aspect of Moscow 57. And then we're going to jam for the rest of the show. So enjoy the commercial. Welcome to Formula Auto Wash, where every day is a great day for a car wash. Open seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Sundays, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Detailing packages for every budget, starting out at $29.99. 100% hand wash and detail centre. Hogs hair and microfiber brushes and mitts. Proudly using Ecolab Blue Coral soaps and waxes. Formula Auto Wash has served the community for over 30 years. See any discounts all day, every day. Ladies Day Wednesday, $3 off any wash. Early bird discount Monday through Thursday till 9.30 a.m. Check out our website, formulaautowash.com. b and Performance Cycles, 439 South Main Street, Messina, New York. We handle all parts, accessories, and do all repairs. We can custom build your bike for show or hot rod. We also do New York State inspections on all motorcycles. b and Performance Cycles, come see us today.
I've never had a reading like this before, so just bear with me. I, I'm, I'm seeing bugs. Bugs? I thought you were a psychic medium. I know, that's what's confusing. Uh, hold on. Do you want the good news or the bad news? I'll take the bad news. I think these are spirit bugs. Spirit bugs? I've never heard of spirit bugs. <laughs> that's just it. Do you want the good news? Yes. I know Joe from Bug Busters of Long Island. He'll take care of your problem. That's great. Hi, I'm Vinny, owner of VMD Electric. Family owned and operated since 1996, serving all in Nassau and Suffolk County. You can call us anytime, night or day, at 631-669-6915 for all your residential and commercial needs. Here are some photos of our current projects. Hello, welcome back to Madhouse TV. Thank you for enjoying our commercials. If anybody would like to sponsor a slot on Madhouse TV, you can call 631-669-7999. I think I got it right. It took me about five, six months to get that down pat, but I did. I got <laughs> Bravo. it right. Bravo! Yeah. So we have Seth Goldman up here. Seth, how are you? I'm very well. Good. So, okay, let's backtrack a little bit. Um, how do you guys know each other? How did all this start with between you and Ellen? Well, Ellen and I met in college. Okay. So we've been friends for, you know, was it five years now, Ellen? <laughs> <laughs> decades. Decades. We've been friends for decades. Well, I, I did take and ten years off. Yes, you did. Oh, I know. Yeah. I and, great you know, and, and so, you know, we've, we, you know, we just hit it off because how could you not like Ellen, right? I know. And, I know. Um, and she, she said I was working in the entertainment industry and uh, Ellen was singing and I came and saw her sing and she was fantastic. And uh, had, had a lot of great fun, great, great times. And then when I left William Morris, I started working as an artist rep, managing people on my own. Sure. What am I doing? I'm going to call my favorite singer and say, hey, you need representation. So we worked together. And um, as well as just managing Ellen, we, uh, she mentioned that she'd put uh, music events and, and, and performance events in different places. We started, I'd done that as well independently. And then we started doing it together. And... Uh, it was actually Ellen who got me to go to the French Culinary Institute because at a certain point I decided I needed to do something like that. And I said, so, you said you went to French Culinary. How was it? She said, it's great. You'll love it. Go. So I did. And it's fantastic. And then Excellent. shortly after that, make a very, to, to, to draw out a long story even longer, um, I actually went to work for Ellen just before I started cooking school as her assistant at the Park Avenue Cafe townhouse booking as the assist assistant to her, her being the banquet manager. And so then I got to work. Uh, when they found out I was in cooking school, they let me you know, uh, intern in the kitchen on the restaurant on the weekends, which David is fantastic. Burke. Yeah. David Burke. David Burke. Uh, I, actually, I came home from, I came to work directly from school one day with an onion tart that we made. And he said, what's that? I said, it's the onion tart I made in cooking school. He said, so why aren't you working in our kitchen? I'm like, gee, you know, thanks, David. You know, yeah. Thanks, chef. So, you know, so, so, that, so that was really wonderful. And uh, I, moved, I wound up moving out of the city, moved upstate New York, lower, lower upstate, or, western Orange County. And... Uh, of course, we're still friends, doing things together. And then one day, I get a phone call from Ellen saying, you know that restaurant I've always said I wanted to open? She said, yeah. I said, I want to do it. I'm ready to do it. And I want you to do it with me. Aww. And Ellen's not a person you can say no to very easily. No, I have a hard time saying no to her. Yeah, and, 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 and you know, I, did, did I wait even three seconds before I said, absolutely, let's do it? No. I don't think so. No. so. Well, we know what the thing is. We've been in the music business together for years, which is if you can get through the music business together, that's, you know, there's only a couple of other industries that are rougher than that. So Presidential we, politics. Right, yeah. we always <laughs> had each other's back, you know. Like, we had 
you know, we had successes and failures and we'd already seen what the worst could do and it hadn't done anything. We were still good friends and we'd always been behaved honorably towards each other. Those are the things you need when you go into business with someone and we had that. I mean, and this business is, the restaurant business is brutal. So it's like the combination that we're doing now of entertainment at <laughs> the restaurant. The only thing, I mean, we could add would be like illegal, you know, dr illegal drug trade. We could start running <laughs> That could be more dangerous because of the guns. Mexico, yeah. maybe. Right, exactly. But other than that, you know, it's about as hard as it can get. So um, I was just very lucky that Seth wanted to do it. And Amazing. And in addition to having, you know, great fun playing with music, now we have great fun playing with food because it's, you know, uh, sometimes I'll come to Ellen, sometimes she'll come to my place and we'll you know, take a basic recipe or three or four recipes that we combine. We're, okay, now, here's a little more of this, huh? What do you think? A little more of this, a little less of that. Okay, let's try it again. And we've had so much fun playing with the food and creating the recipes for everything that we're doing. Sure. So it's been loads of fun. Now, and you're pretty much doing all the food at the Holiday House, right? We, 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 he's we a chef. Every, he's been our the, chef since we launched for the every, So you're the chef for everything. Yes. And this is one of the... This is one of our dishes that... Okay, and what, what do we have here? It's the Moscow 57 Sweet Bulgur Salad, which you see finished here. Mm -hmm. Now, the, 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 the only thing is, it does take a little bit of time because you start with bulgur, which if you don't know what bulgur is, it's a parboiled wheat product. Okay. And um, you can, some recipes you boil it in liquid like you would rice. Sure. You eat, sort of eat it like rice. Uh, this is a recipe actually where it you does, don't. It looks like where, rice. Where you too. don't you don't cook it. You actually just soak it. In this case, and that's good news for a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, that's what I think yeah. is a cool thing about this dish, especially yeah. for women. It's like there's no cooking. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, And bas basically, so to make this sweet bulgur salad, you put in bulgur. Generally, we start with a cup of bulgur. That's of course not a cup of bulgur. Okay. And then you add some pomegranate juice, and this is not the. Cranberry juice cocktail sweetened, this right. pure unsweetened pomegranate juice. And you let that soak for about two hours. You add twi about twice as much liquid to the bulgur. So you let that soak for two hours, but since we don't have the t two hours, we're going to do that. <laughs> you know, it's and, magic. And I've here's some I soaked earlier. Nice. So we can pop I'm that in. I've seen people cook and they've substituted. Um, Broth, beef broth, right, or chicken right. broth for water. I've never seen anybody substitute or use uh, pomegranate, so I'm fascinated well, by it. And, and, and if you don't love pomegranate juice, which oh, I, love it. I, think, yeah. I think you're crazy if you don't, but I, I, if you don't yeah. like it, you can do it with orange juice. Mm -hmm. I mean, the great thing about a salad, I mean, this is our salad. You can make it your salad because we use golden raisins. You don't like raisins? Don't use raisins. Use cranberries. <laughs> use whatever you like. Sure. I like using the raisins, and I just mix it till, you know, we put it enough till... We like. Oh, uh, I can smell it. It smells. We, good. You, know, you put in as much till it's pretty and colorful, and then you, you taste it. And mm -hmm. uh, orange segments. Mm -hmm. oh. So if you're going to use orange juice, you wouldn't use orange segments. You'd use a different segment. Um, so you can also do the bulgur in a juice too. Well, in, that's in what we do. We soak. Juice? We soak. You can soak it in any in anything. You can you can oh. cook it in water or broth. Or in this case, we just we just soak it. We don't cook it. We just. Put it in a bowl. Over, with, is it with, overnight? How many hours did you It say? takes about two hours to be right. soft enough. And the only way you know it's soft enough is you taste it. And it's crunchy and hard and it's breaking your teeth. It's no good. Okay. Because <laughs> we're going to offer some to you. I'm not going to put my hand in it, but, you know. Wow. Now it's, you know, it's soft enough. Well, because I did it last night um, in, in prep for today. Um, so it's really, you know, here's, you know, pomegranate, orange. This fresh is lime, fresh I toast. I toast the almonds. I just buy sliced almonds. Put them in a non-stick pan with no oil, no nothing, and just toast them on the top of the stove. Watch till it gets the color that I like. And if you don't want to toast them, don't bother. So it's completely, you know, uh, completely cooking free. That's the only cooking that happens there. So you toss in the almonds, and then because it's got pomegranate juice, pomegranate seeds. We're crazy about pomegranate. This would have been a great dish. I mean, my parents are still out of electricity, so they can't yeah. cook or bake anything. This would have been a perfect meal for them. And some stores do sell pomegranate seeds just in containers. Okay. Usually you see it like this. Oh, before we go any further, what is the proper way to cut a pomegranate? Ah. Because I did it once and I destroyed a shirt. It's a pain. It, it, you, you always, I mean, it does stain, so it's tricky. Um, let me plate. take another plate. Let me help you. I and... Got it. I mean, the, the best thing to do is have a big bowl of water, mm -hmm. and then and a pocket knife. Any knife. Any knife. Um, okay. This is this is you know this this is a multi-purpose tool. I know, and I thought you were bringing the wine today, so that would have been. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Okay. We meant yep. to. We just got. We were you know, you bring can, you vodka. Actually. You know, you you can cut it in oh. half. You know, you could you know just 
I actually like to use a really small knife on, on the pomegranate yeah. because if you, if you go in with the big knife, you're going to cut a lot of the, uh, the little seeds. Mm -hmm. Ah, look at that. Okay. And, and then if you do it under water, if you do it in a big bowl of water with your hands in the water and you just pull the seeds off, what happens is all the little white flecks that stick, mm -hmm. they'll float to the top and the seeds float to the bottom. So you just like with a little strainer, you scoop all the gook off the top Great and idea. nice okay. and easy. And there it is, and it's gorgeous, and we love it. So let's say a little bit about why we were, I mean, the, the tea room, at the, our menu has tea room plastics on it. Not a, actually at Holiday House, we have a much lighter menu, and mm -hmm. we don't have a full kitchen. So um, we have, but we, de Seth and I developed a Central Ma Asian menu that really runs down the heart of our, our, everything that we do. And so, you know, our tagline is, the, for the Russian tea room, it was slightly to the left of Carnegie Hall. And, we're slightly to the left of the Silk Road. So we kind of tell that story coming out of like basically the, the former stands of the former Soviet Union. So you've got Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Azerbaijan, Georgia, and all of those places. And the, we pick, you know, we're, we have one to two dishes from every region. And, and, the, and <clears throat> then, we, then we do our own thing to it and we adapt it in our, for our taste and for like New York, you know. And this um, is sort of, uh, you know, all the ingredients here are things that you'll find, you know, throughout, you know, Central Asia, the Caucasus, which is, you know, Georgia. Pomegranates, basically native to the Rock Iran mm -hmm. area. Very, very popular in Georgia and the Caucasus Mountains. Uh, so we're just taking a little bit of and everything. The fresh mint now, and are you guys that. Russian? We're both descendants, both of our oh. gra grandparents. All, all your grandparents are Russian? Mine are. My, uh, my, mother's, my mother's parents, so both of the, my grandparents on my mother's side, were from Odessa and Moldova, okay. so they always said they were Russian. Mm -hmm. And then on my father's side, it's the grand, it's my father's grandparents mm -hmm. who were over there. And on my side, it's my well, my mother is actually a South Carolinian, <laughs> uh, so that's a whole other story. But um, on my father's side, they're Russian Jews, and uh, he was, you know, they were, he was first generation. They were um, right, is that right? Or no, yeah. he's second. He's, and they were first. My grandfather yeah. was. Um, came over from uh, so your father's first generation and my yeah my grandmother's people were from around Minsk. And, oh, very uh, nice. Okay, know. excellent. So this is in your blood. It's in your heritage. I think that's, I'm sure that's part of why my father, you know, of all the different restaurants he could have bought into, you know, bought into one that talked to his heritage. Exactly. You know? Sure. Now this looks just phenomenal, and I know Vicky. I think is a vegetarian, so she's gonna like to have some of this also. Then we had some chopped mint because. If for no other, it, the, well, the flavor is great, fresh mint, but also, you know, now, now, you know, and anytime you do anything with cooking, this is what you want to think about. How does it look on the plate? Is it colorful? Is it pretty? You know, the, the, more, the more we add this stuff, the, the prettier it looks. Mm -hmm. And then because it's a salad, you make a dressing. So you always want something a little acidy, so a little bit of lime juice, because limes are very popular Ooh. in that region. And then for the fun of it, it toasted, sesame toasted sesame oil. So again, there's that Asian into Central Asian influence. So that's pretty much the only fat that's in this entire yeah, little, thing. That's it. it was, yeah, no, that's the real reason. And it doesn't that, even get that much. Right. You know, it's just a little a bit drizzle. to bring in. You know, I mean, smell that. You know, oh that that toasted God. sesame oil adds such a great it. flavor. And then because you always have to add something else. Oh, cinnamon. A little bit of yeah. a little bit of powdered cinnamon. Not too much, but a quarter teaspoon. Now, do you guys buy your ingredients in bulk, or would you just get them? You were saying at the farmer's market, that's some of the well, places Oh, we have get. a lot of, well, we everything have Everything is we fresh. Have, yeah, well, everything at Holiday House and, and at our restaurant, um, we'll buy as mm. locally as we possibly can, and we've just started developing these great relationships with Lorraine, who's making the jams and jellies for us from the Florida Farmer's yeah, Market, you market in Flo upstate New York. And that's Florida, New York. Mm -hmm. yeah, Florida, New York. <laughs> And then we've got Peg, Peg's honey, and we're get we're uh, what are we getting from Peg? Is it her honey? It's, and it's her, her it's syrup? her honey. It's not Peg's maple syrup. It's a friend of Peg's who does the maple uh, syrup in Calicoon, New York, and she sells his stuff at the farmers market. And, and then nice. so, and Seth's sister is actually making our pierogies now from uh, Seth's recipe, and we so we've I got her recipe. Is it okay? Yeah, it's, it's really so it's really got, her recipe, and then we tasted them and went that's like Deborah, like you and I do. Right. Um, you know, it's like maybe a little more of this. What do you think if we add a little more of that? And sure. so it's, it's, and it's the same thing. And her name is Deborah, Debbie Markowitz. And she's, um, we've got, what, potato pierogies and... Meat pierogies. Meat pierogies. And the blueberry pierogies. And the blueberry pierogies. Oh, blueberry pierogies. Excellent. Now let's, we're going we're gonna to 
eat a little bit of this and taste this, but you also sing. So not only do you cook, you sing. Well, I, I, you know, before, before college, I started to, um, before college, I started to, um, I, I, was, I was performing a lot. I was even uh, in high school a magician uh, at kids' birthday parties, making balloon animals oh, and things like that. Oh, get out of here. Do you do balloon yeah. animals for Moscow 57? I can still do it. No, I haven't do done it for Moscow 57 yet. I have to oh, learn how to make wow. a... a Thank uh, you. And speaking about food, if we're running out of time, I did want to bring for you <gasps> the classic, the Russian classic, Ooh. the blini with uh, salmon roe and sour cream. Wow. And, uh, no, we, we, we don't we don't source the, we don't source the caviars locally, um, yeah. but I mean, you, know, you have to. We've been buying from our friends at Petrosian. Yeah, Let's give them a plug. Absolutely. They've been mm. very good to us because we're a startup. And Charlene at Petrosian has been incredibly kind to us. You know, so. you see, you know, Absolutely see, delicious. You see that bowl Ooh, wow. of, you know, the, 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 can, the can of the orange. See, now my kids, would, so my kids would think that was candy. They would think those were little gumballs. So well, I you know, they, this is absolutely to me they are. delicious. <laughs> so tell me about your chicken song. How did all of this roll into that awesome chicken song <laughs> well, that we sang at Mike, Mike Jack? <laughs> well, Ellen... Um, Ellen, Ellen found the song you know, and, and shared it with me. And she, it's a Cab Calloway tune. It's, it's an old mm. Cab Calloway tune. Uh, you can see a, there's, there's very little of it of performance of that on YouTube. There's one really ridiculous one of some guy dancing around in a chicken costume <laughs> to that song, um, which just I mean kills it. But Ellen, Ellen did it once or twice in performance, and then once we we did the um, under the tracks pop up this summer. Okay. I'm there in the chef mm -hmm. uniform and I'm cooking, and all of a sudden Ellen said, "Hey, why don't you come out and sing it with me?" I was like, "Oh yeah, that sounds like fun." Mm -hmm. So you know. Because it's a fun song, I don't have to actually be as good as Ellen singing. I don't have to do all the vocalizing, all the right. stuff that she does every day. Um, so it's it's just another way of bringing. You know, the the great thing about the entertainment business and food is that it's really all the same thing. It's all about making people happy. Sure. So it's all an extension, and it's all the same thing, and it all rolls in. Excellent. Well, we are going to cut to another commercial break, and when we come back. Ellen, Ethan, Ben, and, and, and hopefully Seth, we're going to be singing. You're going to hear these guys. They are going to bring tears to, well, they brought tears to my eyes, but uh, you're going to love them. So enjoy the commercials. Suffolk County Gold Refinery for the highest paid prices for your gold, diamonds, and jewelry with cash on the spot. Visit their showroom for unbelievable prices on fine jewelry and engagement rings. 71 Nobot Boulevard, Farmingdale, 631-777-CASH. Suffolk County Gold Refinery for the highest paid prices for your gold, diamonds, and jewelry with cash on the spot. Visit their showroom for unbelievable prices on fine jewelry and engagement rings. 71 Nobot Boulevard, Farmingdale, 631-777-CASH. For the highest paid prices for your gold, diamonds, and jewelry with cash on the spot. Suffolk County Gold Refinery, 631-777-CASH. What is Grand Prix Motorsports? It's a full-service motorsport performance and service shop. It's West Coast custom style, East Coast pricing, old-school customer service, custom-built bikes, all-out performance upgrades, and free towing, too. Grand Prix Motorsports is automobile, motorcycle, jet ski, and ATV, performance, service, and repair. It's online at GrandPrixMS.com. Grand Prix Motorsports, Long Island Avenue, Deer Park.
Welcome back to Rendezvous with Alicia. Again, thank you, Ellen Kay and Moscow 57 for joining us. Right now, they are going to sing a phenomenal song called Hardcore Christmas, or Hard Candy Christmas. Sorry. Hard, hard Candy Christmas. Sorry, my brain's like somewhere else today. So enjoy. This song made me cry before, so enjoy. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, we're singing this for everybody on Long Island and everywhere else um, in the tri-state area that just got hit so hard by the hurricane. Um, I actually grew up on Long Island, you know, in the summers, and my, I raised my son all the summers on Long Island, and his dad actually was born in Patchogue, so uh, we have a really deep, deep feeling for Long Island, and when Alicia, you know, when this all happened and I started talking to Alicia, I thought, well, let's do this tune, and so it is a little sad, but it's also a very kind of surviving I'm going to make it through song. So this is for everybody out there right now that's having a hard candy Christmas.
That was so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you all enjoyed that, but that's not it. They have a couple more songs that they're going to sing. What are you guys singing next? Well, I thought, you know, let's break it up. I mean, that was pretty tragic. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Seth, what do you think? You want to do your, you know, your number? Why not? Oh, let's do it. This okay. is a Woo. tune, and um, we sing it in all our pop-ups, and uh, I don't know, we sing it wherever we go. It's kind of crazy. It's what do you become want? our song. <laughs> <laughs> um, here we go. You ready? You in good shape? Some people say their song is, you know, that Celine Dion Titanic song, and we have this. Um, when we're, uh, you know, when we're at the pop-up, like last night, we know, in the middle of everything, Seth runs out of the kitchen and just starts singing the song, and it's pretty freaking hysterical. But usually we wait till everyone's gotten their food. <laughs> and a few drinks. <laughs> exactly. Here we go. You ready? It's a very serious song. Are you ready? It's I'm actually ready. a sing-along, so if you're out there, sing along. Here we go. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Chicken. Nice fried chicken. Barbecue chicken. Won't you send it down the line? Everybody's talking about chicken. What do they say? Chicken's a popular bird. But anywhere you go, you're bound to find a chicken ain't nothing but a bird. Some folks call it a fowl. But a bird. You can broil it, roast it, boil it, put it in a pan or a pot. Eat it with potatoes, rice or tomatoes, a chicken still what you got. Hey! It was a dish for old Caesar. And also King Henry the Third. But Columbus was smart, said you can't fool me. A chicken ain't nothing but a bird. love them. Um, again, this is Ellen Kay, and this is Seth, and Ethan, and oh my god, Barry, Ben, Ben, ben. I knew it was the B, and Brown. Ben, Benjamin Brown, uh, who was actually the guitar, uh, the bassist for Lena Horne, and everybody has such great history. We are going to cut to a commercial break, and when we come back, we are going to end the show. We're going to do two more songs. Whatever you want. We're here for you. Two more. We're going to do two more songs, and then we're just going to end the show and just enjoy. So enjoy the commercials. Auto Wash, where every day is a great day for a car wash. Open seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Sundays, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. 
detailing packages for every budget starting out at $29.99. 100% hand wash and detail centre. Hogs hair and microfiber brushes and mitts. Proudly using Ecolab Blue Coral soaps and waxes. Formula Auto Wash has served the community for over 30 years. See any discounts all day, every day. Ladies Day Wednesday, $3 off any wash. Early bird discount Monday through Thursday till 9.30 a.m. Check out our website, formulaautowash.com. b and Performance Cycles, 439 South Main Street, Messina, New York. We handle all parts, accessories, and do all repairs. We can custom build your bike for show or hot rod. We also do New York State inspections on all motorcycles. b and Performance Cycles, come see us today. Welcome back to Madhouse TV. Before we end the show, we're going to do two more songs. But I just wanted to get a couple words in from Benjamin and from Ethan. Benjamin, can you tell me, all, just give us a little a brief rundown about your history, because you've worked with some phenomenal, famously people. Okay, it started out with Buddy Rich, did Lou Rawls, then moved to New York, and then did uh, Lena Horne, and then Broadway, and then Sesame Street, and... I think that's enough right now. Okay. Right. <laughs> I know, okay, I know. There's so the list goes yeah. on. How Dizzy, Dizzy Gillespie is, uh, How's Elmo Dennehy. doing? How's Elmo? Elmo is very good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. Let me see if I can switch this over to Ethan. Ethan, can you give us a little bit of brief history about you? Uh, yes, I um, played on Broadway. My, my single biggest credit is I did Cats, the musical, on Broadway for 18 years. Oh, wow. What was that like? Uh, 18 years of playing cats. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. a lot like that. Okay, good, great. Well, I'm, I, I'm very honored to be here with all of you guys. I mean, all of you have so much history and such greatness behind you. I'm going to give the mic back to Ellen so you guys can resume your singing. And I'm going to shimmy out the back somehow. Oh, and, uh, and your new CD. Can we talk a little bit oh, about yeah, this quick? <laughs> yes, Ice thanks. Wine, which I thought we really had wine in the studio. I was like, all right. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. all the songs we did today are um, from Ice Wine. And uh, it's Songs for Christmas and Dark Winter Night. So with, uh, the Dark Winter Night songs actually can take you through till March. And um, uh, let's see, Ethan produced and arranged it with Seth and myself. And Ben's on it. And we have a lot of amazing New York musicians, and uh, it's very, you know, we're, you know, we, it's a label, we love this album. Where can we get it? Um, you can actually get it on Amazon.com and CD Baby, Excellent. and actually through our website, Moscow57.com, you can go right there and, and find everything. Awesome. And find us on YouTube, and we'll also be linking to your show. So. Yes, excellent, and thank you. Absolutely. Okay, so I'm going to shimmy out of here, off the camera, excuse me everybody. And I'm going to say one more thing oh, about yes. Holiday House, <laughs> just that we're raising funds for breast cancer, and Lee Naiman, who is actually a Long Island and New York uh, City designer, and his partner Edward, um, have designed our room at uh, Holiday House. And so which is the Moscow 57 Cafe, and it's really quite beautiful in a tented courtyard, and the house is just amazingly gorgeous. Iris Dankner uh, conceived of it, and it's quite extraordinary, and the funds are going to Evelyn Lauder's um, Breast Cancer Research Foundation. So that's it. Please come, come and see us at East 63rd Street. Um, we could really use it, and um, our hearts go out to everybody right now um, on Long Island. For Hope you guys get back on your feet as quickly as possible. Here's the Chuck Berry tune. Merry Christmas, baby. You really did treat me. Bought me a high five for Christmas. Now I'm living. 
living in paradise Well, I'm feeling mighty fine Got that good music on my radio Yes, I'm feeling mighty fine Got that good music on my Now we have one more song by Ellen Kay in Moscow 57. Ellen, what song is this? It's I Wish You Love, and I thought it was a good tune. I that wish you love. That kind of goes with love. the way we're all feeling right now. Awesome. What a great way to end my show. I will see everybody back here next week. Next week I have um, the Adhesion Foundation, and I have Dan Reardon coming to sing. So enjoy. We're going to end with Ellen singing the show. So kisses, keep warm. I hope everybody has food, electricity. And if you don't, PM me, and I'll figure out a way to get you, well, at least the food part, not the electric part. But anyway, enjoy, Alan. Goodbye. We love being here. Thanks so much. Goodbye. No use leading with our chin. This is where our story ends. Never lovers, ever friends. Goodbye. Let our hearts call it a day. But before you walk away, I sincerely want to say, I wish you bluebirds in the spring to give your heart a song to sing, and then a kiss, but more than this, I wish you love. Much more than wealth, I wish you love. My breaking heart, and I agree that you and I will never be. So, with my best, my very best, I set you free.
to keep 